Hello, folks. Happy Friday. I'm busy offline today, but I wanted to take a minute to show you some cool stuff in my software that you can only see right now because I haven't finished the C++ code yet. So the build, the actual compile fails and we were able to see my temporary files. And I want to show that to you. So if you've been following, I'm building a backend uh, for my new company um, in C++. Uh, the production server is uh, currently Apache, will be maybe Nginx next year. That doesn't matter. That, that is uh, pre-done stuff that does all the heavy lifting, the security, firewall, the SSL certificates, the load balance, all this kind of stuff, you know. Um, people will tell you that you can't do what I'm doing because they, they don't know what they're talking about, right? So, you know, obviously you can see Node.js and TypeScript is very despicable stuff that most people are getting tired of. There's lots of nice new, uh, light, lighter weight ways to do things. Um, I like C++, so I'm just doing my back end uh, in C++. And think of it like Express.js, except way simpler, way less files, way more straightforward. Um, same idea where you have like, it's a raw socket server listing on the port. You can define routes. You can have an API endpoint. You can do database calls, all that kind of stuff. I've flushed out most of it. I'm most happy and impressed with the build system I built from scratch here. Um, that's what I want to take you through today. <clears throat> so we have a pre-compile, um, which fires before the actual GCC compile. Um, and the post-compile just clean, cleans up the temporary files um, that I'm going to show you today as the build fails. But we're doing three really cool things, which is in my source, and again, because I'm coming from the place that like, Node.js and TypeScript and a lot of this stuff is just absolutely obnoxious. Uh, solutions that have been made by people that have no idea with what they're doing and how things actually work. And that's how you end up with these enormous projects that have hundreds, if not thousands of files and no one has a fucking clue what they're doing, right? Um, what I like to see in the code is, for example, for my routes, for the home page, um, I have a string literal, um, and this is all custom by me. The response type, response type is my own custom type and my own design here. Um, a string literal in my source code of index.html, because you know I'm I'm the front end uh, developer here as well, who right now just has a very simple, bringing it over for you. Now dev.speedboards.live, this is not a raw C++ web app. This is just the Apache server serving my front end in real time so I can preview, see it as a developer. Similar idea with these janky node tools like browser, you know, I can't remember what it was even called, browser sync and all that stuff, but when you own the entire data center, you might as well just set yourself up a subdomain, throw a password on it, whatever, and then you can just don't have to fuck around with uh, any of these uh, shoddy, you know, uh, elastic band paperclip solutions, right? So just to get it running, I have one of everything, right? I have a plat icon, I have a logo, I have um, CSS imports, and I have a JavaScript that just uh, calculates the X, Y pixels and can resize the window on the fly and all this stuff. Um, just to get started and then build up the whole back end before I come back to the front end. So what we're working with is just um, index.html, logo.ping, style.css, and app.js. Uh, there's no restrictions. You can build your front end however you want, but just for what I'm doing, that's all I have. And so, because your routes are not, shouldn't be dynamic really um, in your own little app, I'm defining them. So my homepage route in my source code of C++, I don't want to see this giant, ugly uh, HTML, the way it looks right here, right? This is literally the page here. 
So in my code, I'll never see anything more than that. Again, we head over to the assets. Here's where it gets like really interesting. So app.min.js and style.min.css. So again, those are just string literals. When I'm in here on the C++ side, I don't want to be looking at uh, front end code, but it should be baked into the binary, right? And then also this comment here that says binaries. This is also uh, special because um, you know, like I said, your your routes are not dynamic. Like I know I have a forward slash API, forward slash platform, and the homepage, forward slash. So those can be string literals. However, binaries and assets and associated things, I want this to be totally dynamic. So let's step you through the build file now. The first thing that happens is, again, because I just consider TypeScript and Node to be pure cancer, this is... Um, in a Docker container. So the first thing it does is it opens app.js and, and style.css, pipes them into my node instance to minify, uglify, mangle, compress, do that thing before bringing it back into the C++ source code and overwriting the file name in the string literal with the actual raw string content of said text file. So that when it's compiled, it is just the speed of light solution in memory part of the app itself. Um, so that's the first thing that happens. Second thing that happens is string literals. Um, kind of, you know, minify first, then the string literal actually goes, uses a Perl script. This Perl is better for uh, regex activities. Then shell, especially in a make file, has its own syntax for a shell. And then you start getting into like escape characters and all this nonsense, like even with AI, good grief, trying to get it to work directly in the make file. So Perl is a good solution for regex and text activities. So I do, I have two, I have a process string literal function and a process binaries function in my Perl make uh, script. So after the minification, it simply calls the string literal and then Perl goes in, finds index.html, then replaces it with the actual contents. Same for app.js and style.css. Now where the magic happens is you have this second guy here processing uh, binary files with obj copy. So you have your xxd um, that can convert uh, any binary file into an unsigned char uh, array of bytes in a giant C++ source file text file and compile it in. But that's very old school. It's from like VI, Vim days. It's like that old. Another built-in to all Linux. Again, you should be using Linux, you know, Mac OS, Linux, all this nice stuff is built in. Um, we're using Linux here. Um, OBJ copy is a more modern thing that actually will take any binary file, such as my logo.ping, and it will actually compile it into C++ bytecode as an object file and then expose symbols. Like normally, you know, those whatever symbols would be obfuscated or debug symbols that are human readable would be removed from the code. Well, with, with OBJ copy for your binaries, you want them to have human readable names, like something, something, logo, PM, something, whatever, right? So then you are presented with the start, end, and size um, of that object file containing C++ bytecode um, when you do that. It's really, really cool. So everything that you see happen in my build in a second is all dynamic. Like, and then it, it takes the output from obj copy to the nm command, which will just list any symbols that it finds in C++ bytecode. It then pipes the out from, output from that to form properly declared extern statements for the C++ source code, such as a const char for like the start and the end positions and a size t const for uh, the size, right? Which is what you need to work with any like byte stream, array of bytes, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, so yeah, you can actually see, so I showed you, in my source code, keep it nice and clean and I'm never gonna see, I'm just gonna see the references to the file names like, oh, okay, that's what it goes to. I'm gonna be over in routes, same thing like oh, H, uh, HTML for in, for the home route. Um, let's see what happens when we run a make. It's going to make me put in my credentials for Docker. But yeah, first thing it's doing, 
go into Docker, and then you'll see there's boom, there's piped output. Then boom, there's the piped output from converting logo ping into a C++ uh, bytecode. And you have your end size and start. And then as promised, the build fails on my assets because we just haven't got that far yet. I had to perfect this build system first. Um, so what's really cool is you can see the files modified before I do the cleanup. So you go to routes, look at that. Right, and the thing about a raw string literal like that using those special delimiters, um, no escaping characters whatsoever. So you could even have your JavaScript code in here and like there's no way um, that the delimiter would be like uh, bracket equals 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 colon like the chance is 99.99990. It's my own product. Customers will not be adding uh, code into it. So this could never break um, if you know what I'm saying, right? And there's no security issues. Only me and the production can inject this in here, compile it, and it's compiled code. So that's really, really cool. And then less ugly than seeing that in here and having to copy and paste or do more regex stuff. It creates a backup file, and then when the build is successful, it then erases the temporary files and restores them with uh, um, that. So one thing I've, I've noticed, you know, you can think of everything, no matter how good you are at this, is I, I don't like what that's doing to my file modified dates and um, get repo thinking they're new files and stuff. So what I will look at in version 0 0.3 is actually creating different branches. Um, so I have like a main branch, master branch, whatever. I'll, I'll probably have like a deployment branch, beta branch or whatever, and then I'll rejig this make file to only be modifying files in a different branch so that in my true source, it never has this record of things being modified that weren't actually modified by, by a human, right? Like this is kind of an issue we have now with AI and all this stuff. I think even more cool than the routes is seeing the assets, right? Because look, it goes in there and these extern declarations are done uh, dynamically, not by me. And logo.ping is not hard coded. I just have an array of allowed file types. And for now I'm al allowing ping and icon files only in the test. Um, and what's also cool is you see the string literals for the minified and then, you know, look how nice that looks minified, right? But again, you don't want to see that in your source code. I, you know, so I don't, I have an external shell script just during debug to quickly clean that up so that I don't have to see that ugliness in the uh, source code. But yeah, it just goes right back to being very manageable, right? Um, and it's not going to have to, so what, the only thing this is missing, it has api.cpp, we're not getting into that today. Platform.cpp really just means database. Database is SQLite, if you know what you're doing, it's SQLite. Um, most used database in the world, uh, standard C++ library, link it right in here. It's way less code than fucking around with JavaScript, again, if you know what you're doing. Um, and then this is the speed of light solution, because once compiled, not is not only is index html javascript css fab icon your logos all the binaries for your site are part of the exe file of the raw so socket server that's standing up uh, on the data center behind a real true apache nginx you know but um in my opinion this is still really clean this is really really clean um i'd like to see more people doing this pardon me avail yourself the use of ai now is um, there's no more excuse for writing shitty software and dealing with other people's shitty software and shitty frameworks and like big, huge frameworks like Node and all this stuff that from the conception you can see is like a workaround from people that just have no idea what they're doing, right? And this is always how it goes if you've had these jobs and you know you've been a to support for developers because engineers need technical support as well. So like if you're so senior in this space, what it all boils down to when you're trying to correct other people's code or like steer them on the right path is everyone's code is too big. 
and too much and they're using too much and they're including too much and they have too many dependencies and they're installing libraries and they're doing all this stuff because they don't know how anything works, right? Um, yeah, you know, don't know what to say about that. Um, but this will work out for me. The only thing missing is JWTS authentication, which we're going to build that out um, over the next time. That will be the next thing that I build out. Um, because there's not really authentication like that for the end users. There's only authentication like that required for me um, and the guy who's going to be running the site and um, any admins and, and such. Um, using the site, people will be able to just do, I think it's going to be SSO. I've already gone through the Microsoft documentation of how you implement uh, like Xbox, Skype, Teams, Hotmail, Outlook.com if you want to use you know, just like signing with my Facebook, signing with my Gmail. That way I'm not storing anybody's credentials, even if they're made up on my own site. I don't want that. I don't want storing people's credentials. Um, and uh, as far as assets, I was thinking about it the other day. There are, because what, what, what this uh, product is, is a tournament leaderboard. Um, uh, tournament leaderboards kind of uh, data aggregation site with tables and stuff. So it's heavy on icons. There's going to be icons, which is why I've allowed ping and icon. I guess SVG, I'll allow SVG and use SVG um, for all my little icons throughout the site. Um, but this header graphic is literally the only graphic. I have it in different sizes. And um, the only other graphics on the entire site um, are going to be video game box art uh, JPEGs or pings, right? And there's three different sites on the internet, including IGDB, which is like IMDB, but it's for video games, IGBD, which is owned by Amazon. And it literally is an API that, that can spit out the box art of video games. So in my design here, because I'm going to need to display those on my site, but I don't own the IP of those. And they don't need to be 100,000 JPEGs baked into the EXE file of my raw C++ socket server either. So, like I said, in, but people who don't know what they're doing would say this is crazy and you can't do this, right? Because they have no idea what they're actually doing. Um, you wouldn't just take my app and then install it on Linux and open a port and like, ah, I have a server that can handle 10,000 concurrent connections at C10K problem, computer science, right? Like, they don't even know what the C10K problem in computer science is because they have no fucking clue what they're doing. But they would tell you things like you can't do this and you have to do this and you have to do that, right? It's just obvious when you know what you're doing, right? Like in production, you have an actual server. You have server software. I have owned my data center for so long, a decade plus, that uh, I'm still using Apache because it'll be seven sites and a huge nightmare to do a big migration, which I will eventually do. I think I planned it in the winter time and I don't have much going on. Uh, I'm going to take everything offline and uh, look at getting Nginx going and uh, I'm going to be even happier with that because Nginx is sort of the same concept of, of me even just writing the app itself as its own socket server and then it's sort of Nginx takes the speedboards.live and pipes it to that internal service that's running in my data center, right? And then you have the best of both worlds. You have mission critical, secure, firewall, data center, Cloudflare, F5, load balancing, um, security, if I didn't already say that five times, um, and then C10K problem. Obviously, my site is not going to become uh, 10,000 concurrent users. If it if it gets even a thousand users, it like it'll be worth so much money that I'll just sell it before it gets to that point. Um, but yeah, um, it's really exciting, guys. I this is this is primarily what I do on my stream. We had a really popping stream the other day. I had about uh, 37 to 41 concurrent people all over the world watching me uh, design this build system and. We were doing some documentation on yesterday and stuff like that. Just need a break today, so I wanted to make a video giving you guys uh, the update. And uh, once again, I filmed a fucking 20-minute video, so we'll see. <laughs> if you actually watched uh, 
uh, the whole video. Um, you're not, you are, are such an amazing person who is brilliant and talented and has a huge attention span that you should actually contact me and I will literally like buy you something because um, most people's attention span can't really go beyond 30 seconds. Hence all the problems that we're having these days. So happy Friday, everybody. Enjoy. Stay tuned. Uh, let's see um, if I'm going to work on this project this weekend or not. I don't, I don't know. Peace.